I'd like to call to order the, sem the September 19th, year 2000, meeting of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. First order of business is minutes of the previous meeting of August 15th, year 2000. Is there any discussion from board members? I move acceptance. Thank you, Nancy. It's been moved to accept it, seconded by David. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please signify your right hand. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Correspondence received. Letter from town attorney in regards to open space zoning provisions. Zoning news, July 2000. Zoning news, August 2000. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Clark in regards to the dugouts. Letter from Police Chief Williams in regards to the dugouts application. Letter from Edward Masterson in regards to the Irving Station. A letter from Emily Masterson in regards to the Irving Station proposed application. A letter from Mr. and Mrs. Stephen in regards to the Irving Station. A letter from Mr. and Mrs. Freeman in regards to the Irving Station. And a letter from B. McClellan in regards to the Irving Station. Any comments from board members in regards to correspondence received? Hearing none, there is an item this evening on the consent agenda. Murray Hill Garage Site Plan. Leland Skip Murray III is requesting an amendment to a previously approved site plan to add a garage door to the north side of the proposed garage to be located at 1230 Shore Road. This is in regards to section 19-9-6 amendments. Peter, I need to recuse myself from this matter. Thank you, Karen business relationship with the client. It should the be a very short discussion if you wish to remain in your seat. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Maureen, you want to just quickly bring us up to date? Sure. Um, the board approved this site plan a few months ago, and since that time, the applicant has uh, decided they would like to add a second garage door to the building. The garage door would be on the side of the building that faces Shore Road, but I doubt it would be visible from Shore Road. Um, there aren't any other changes proposed. Is there any need for a substantial discussion from board members? Steve? <clears throat> Let's make a motion. Right ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Leland P. Murray III to amend the recently approved site plan for a replacement garage located at 1230 Shore Road to add a garage door on the north side of the building be approved as a consent agenda item. Is there a second on the motion? Second on the motion. Thank you, David. Is there further discussion from board members? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your right hand. Karen did abstain, and it was unanimous. <clears throat> One item on new business on tonight's agenda, high school dugouts walkway site plan. Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review for proposed dugouts and walkways to be constructed at Holman and Campano Fields, located at the high school off Ocean House Road. Section 19-9, site plan completeness is what we're working on for us this evening. Could you take care of the introduction, Maureen? Certainly. Um, what you don't have in your packet this evening is the site plan completeness checklist. It was prepared and left out of your package, um, but there's only one item on there that has per that is suggested that may, may potentially be incomplete, and that's the survey submitted by the applicant. It's a 1994 survey, which in and of itself would probably be no problem, except that there's been a major renovation of the schools, which has changed the footprint so that the survey actually doesn't show the existing buildings as they currently exist. However, the actual construction plan that the applicant has submitted does show the buildings as they currently exist, and the, there's no change near those buildings as part of this proposal. So I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. The if the applicant could come forward and briefly describe the application, please. Good evening. Um, I'm Steve Harding. I'm, I work for OST Associates. I'm also the town engineer. I'll be representing the applicant of the town of Cape Elizabeth this evening. I have with me tonight Keith Weatherby, the athletic director at the high school, and Dave Reed, a uh, member of the athletic boosters. Um, the uh, project that you have tonight 
for you is uh, pretty much the same project that we've talked about in two workshop sessions. Um, basically, it's the construction of two dugouts at the baseball field, which is referred to as Holman Field, uh, which is directly behind the Pond, School, Pond Cove Middle School, and then two more dugouts over at Campano Field, which is a softball field at the high school. Uh, the, during a workshop session, a question was raised about the uh, accessibility of the dugouts and whether or not they needed to be ADA compliant. We researched that and it determined that they do need to be ADA compliant. In doing that, we have a, a ramped uh, arrangement in the rear of the dugout which would lead to a doorway which would make the, the dugouts themselves ADA compliant. And we have proposed a system of walkways and stairwells to uh, meet the ADA requirements so that uh, the accessibility from the parking lot area is also met. And the, at the baseball field, we'll be uh, providing a w new walkway off an existing walkway which will follow the slope down uh, to the behind the, the backstop where it will Y and there'll be a path leading to each uh, dugout. For the softball field, it's a little bit more difficult. There's a steep bank here if you're familiar with this area. Uh, we have proposed a, a ramp that will switch back along the slope uh, and then basically follow a, what's a, a beaten path now which goes around the exterior of the detention pond. And then again, we have another switch back going up over a slope and this uh, walkway will also lead to both dugouts. There's also a new stairway that's proposed. We see this being like the, mo the most uh, uh, used route to the field. Right now it's a, a, an eroded bank where people go over and it's, it's fairly dangerous when it's wet. Uh, we have a, a set of concrete stairs that are proposed to go down to that and that will tie into the walkway. Uh, the dugouts themselves are sunken 22 inches in the ground. Uh, the baseball dugout is 58 feet long. The softball dugouts will be 44 feet long. That was done to make the uh, dugouts more compatible to the uh, distance of the base pass and make them look more, um, the softball field make it smaller so it would fit the smaller field. Uh, those uh, dugouts will have a, a brick exterior. The trim will be white to match, uh, and the brick and the trim is proposed to uh, match the school. Uh, exterior. Uh, we originally had proposed to bring uh, water fountains into the dugouts. Uh, after researching that and examining the cost to do that, uh, we've abandoned that plan and there'll be just water coolers brought to the dugouts. There are no other utilities involved with the project. Uh, the drainage for the field, each dugout will have area drains in front of the dugout with crushed stone around them. There'll also be area drains inside the dugout and uh, also on the, the walkway will be actually floor drains. These will connect together for the baseball field. They'll be run underground to tie into an existing storm drainage outfall. It's a, a pipe system that's crossing in the right field line. And for the baseball field, they'll be, uh, excuse me, the softball field, they'll be tied together and drain out to an existing ditch which uh, falls along the property line down to the marsh area. Um, we are asking for a, a waiver of the tree study and the soil survey. The soil survey is usually used, uh, it's a high intensity soil survey. Uh, obviously these are all filled lands and we feel they're suitable for the project that's being presented. The tree study, there's really only one tree that's part of the project and that's a 15 inch oak which is right along the walkway leading to the softball field and we're going to try to work around that. Um, we have applied for a DEP modification. It's, uh, we think it's a fairly minor thing. Unfortunately, the DEP person that would be reviewing that has been on vacation since we submitted it, so we haven't gotten our feedback yet, but we think that's a, a fairly minor step. Um, we also have included, and I think Maureen touched upon it in her uh, memo to you, we want to leave the boosters the uh, opportunity to delete the interior brickwork, the dugouts, in case that becomes a, a cost issue. If we can there's a, a situation where they need to save some money, we think that's probably the most obvious one, so we'd like to have that as an alternate to the plan. Uh, I also would like to take a minute to address the comments that were uh, presented in the September 10th letter from Troy Clark and Jane Clark. Uh, they brought up three issues. The first was a concern regarding lighting. There won't be any lighting for the project. Another concern had to do with the disruption of trees. Uh, we're still maintaining the buffer alongside this area in the Capano area. Uh, the only tree, as I mentioned, is a 15-inch oval, which would be beside the walkway, and we're going to try to work around that and save that, so hopefully there will be no um, adverse impact to that tree through this project. 
Uh, the clerks also asked for a fence to be erected. They had concerns with this buffer area and uh, kids congregating in here. Uh, we don't feel that this walkway is going to encourage or, or discourage people from going in there. Um, basically, what it's doing is providing a, a safer access to the field that's currently being used now. Uh, the fence, as they would propose, it would be approximately 100 feet off the property line, and unless it totally encompassed this area here, I don't think you would really get, a, get much benefit from it. Um, so we don't think that that's an appropriate situation. They brought up a safety concern, which we don't, we don't share with them. Uh, they felt that the steep bank in here, we might need more protection in there. And, um, where we're proposing the walkway, it, it shouldn't be a concern. So um, we don't feel that uh, that's really an appropriate uh, situation for us to get into. Uh, having said that, uh, open it up for questions. Thank you, Steve. If I could make a quick announcement, it's been brought to my attention that there are some individual residents of the town here this evening who have concerns about uh, a potential application being brought concerning the Irving Station conversion. The Irving Station conversion and the application is not on the agenda this evening and won't be discussed. And I just didn't want you to have to sit through an entire meeting to find that out. This time, just a reminder to the board, we must limit our discussion to the completeness of the application uh, before we go on to discussion in general of this project <coughs> and whether or not a sidewalk or public hearing will be scheduled by the board. So again, if we could limit our discussion initially just to the completeness of the application. Yes, Steve. Uh, since no one has jumped in, um, I'd like to make a motion. Go right ahead. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted in the facts presented the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review to construct dugouts and walkways at Holman and Capano fields located north of the high school be deemed complete. Thank you. Is there a second of that motion, please? First. Second. Thank you, Karen. It's been moved and seconded. That the application be deemed complete. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, I'll close discussion. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you. you. Might want to move on now to a discussion as to whether or not a public hearing should be scheduled by the planning board. <clears throat> We have a number of options. We can talk about a, uh, a public hearing, we can talk about a site walk, or we can discuss the subject this evening, the application, and vote yay or nay on the entire application. The options are yours to consider. In regards to the public hearing, are there any comments? I guess I have a question. Go right ahead, Steve. Um, it seems to me that the everything else has impacted the public in any way, shape, or manner. We've had a um, public hearing. It only seems uh, fair that this be the case with this as well. Um, it seems to me that probably we've heard from all the members of the public that we're going to hear from via letter, but I'm not sure if I want to make that decision to not let people speak if they want to or wish to. So that's my thoughts, and I'm just asking the board of how, the, you know, I guess, how they feel if we should or shouldn't. Yes, John. Um, I just would have a question of, of the applicant regarding timing. Uh, what, what's your schedule on this, and when would you have to begin? Well, our desire was to, to uh, get this approved as soon as possible so that the boosters could start their active fundraising and to pull this together. Um, I don't know, David, are you trying to get it done this season? Uh, we would like to have it ready for opening day in April. Yeah, would, what we're trying to do is, is set it up so that they could do the work this fall if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, Obviously, thanks. Getting close to the season. Uh, I guess, Mr. Chairman, in, in light of that, um, I would agree 
with Steve on the point that I think we've heard from all the members of the public that had a concern, and I think the concerns were addressed uh, adequately, and I don't see any reason to have a public hearing just to have it, in that it would delay them getting started on this project. Thank you, John. Yes, David? Just like the question, Maureen, to s how much time would we uh, eat up if we had a hearing or a site walk before they could get going with their plans? If you decided to schedule a public hearing, uh, you would schedule it for next month's meeting. So that's October, I think it's 16th, and then conceivably you could approve it that night after the public hearing. Um, if you were to schedule a site walk, you would schedule it before next month's meeting. So you'd be, you'd be putting off about a month. Other board members? Mark? Uh, perhaps uh, if the applicant could, could clarify. Uh, you just made a couple statements. One, we need to start fundraising, and two, we want to start construction this fall. Are you going to start construction without fundraising, or do you, in fact, have a period of fundraising to go through? There is a period of fundraising to go through. Hopefully, it'll be a short period. But uh, oh, okay. that's optimistic. Um, obviously, but we, the, the boosters need to come up with enough sufficient funds to begin the construction. They have to prove that to the town that they have, okay. have the impetus to go. Um, Nance, uh, go ahead, Mark. Well, I, I had some thoughts on the fact that uh, you know we could. I think most of the, or at least I could, speaking for myself, I mean, we've been by the site many times before, and. Uh, Without going to the extent of scheduling a site walk, I would think that uh, one month from now, I could be fairly well prepared to to uh, look at the uh, that that uh, this coming to the table again and and taking care of it all at once right then. Uh, so I wouldn't see any. <clears throat> I think there are benefits to be gained given the fact that we have letters from uh, from people who are concerned with the project to uh, have a chance to. Uh, to come in and uh, tell us what they think of it, and uh, we could uh, uh, have the opportunity then next month to wind things up. I see no problem with that. Thank you. Nancy, you had your hand up. Oh, you stole my thunder. <laughs> I think um, I'd like to see a public hearing because this is a, a public um, 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 it does affect the public, and um, there, since so many neighbors abut this property, um, I think they should be given a chance to comment. And um, they don't always keep track of the planning board agendas, and although we haven't heard from too many people. Uh, they might appreciate uh, some more time to <clears> comment <throat> and come before a public hearing. What are your feelings on a site walk? Hmm? What are your feelings on a site walk? I don't think we need a site walk. Okay. Thank you. Further comments? Karen? I'll just weigh in on both issues. In terms of a site walk, I too have had an opportunity to visit the location myself with kids' sports activities, so you know I'm comfortable not having a formal site walk. In terms of the public hearing, because we have had a letter from one resident, um, some people are busier or lose track of time and may have questions, comments, or concerns and may not have had the chance to put them down in writing, I would like to give them an opportunity to comment, so I'd weigh in on in favor of having a public hearing. Steve. Question for Maureen. Uh, all the abutters have been noticed, I assume. And how long ago was that done? Um, we usually mail out public notice at least 10 days prior to the meeting, so they should have received it at least a, a week prior to this meeting. Uh, when this item was on the planning board workshop agenda, they also would have received a notice for that. So. Um, people who are near the project would have received a total of two notices over a couple of months. Are you aware of anyone 
that was attended the workshop that were butters to this project? Um, no, I'm not. Maureen, has your office received any comments or phone calls from concerned about us that maybe did not follow up with the letter? Um, I've been out the last couple of days, but other than that, I haven't heard anything except for the letter you've received. My feelings on the matter of a site walk, as with many members of the board, I've had the opportunity to have two children go through the school system who are actively involved in sports, and as an individual member of the board, I see no need for a site walk. Uh, in regards to the, uh, the public hearing, it appears the public has been well informed. There has been one concern that the applicant has freely and quickly addressed. Uh, and it appears I might be in the minority, but I don't see a need for a public hearing. It's, it's just my feeling after having a lot of public hearings uh, that if we do indeed schedule one, we'll have two or three members from the Boosters Club uh, explaining to us why it's a worthwhile project and nobody saying anything negative about the project. Uh, and the public has been informed, and they've, uh, in my opinion, made a decision not to be part of the decision-making process. Uh, I believe it's this time, uh, if we could clear from the table the matter of a public hearing, if I could have a motion for a member of the board, and we'll see where we all stand. Okay. Um. Actually, I don't think we need to make a motion. Um, I guess I'm going to suggest that we not have a public hearing. If someone differs, um, then I guess they should make a motion. Thank you, Steve. Would a board member care to make a motion in regards to scheduling this public hearing? I would. Go right ahead, Nancy. I, I move that um, we have um, a public hearing next month. Motion has been made to schedule a public hearing for our next regularly scheduled meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Wilcox. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion in regards to scheduling a public hearing? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? Next item of the business. We have a tie. Can the town plan a vote? <laughs> Why did you have a tie? No. Was it four to three? Four no, to three. You, okay. You, you I'm sorry. I took my glasses off and couldn't see down the end of the podium. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so we are not having a public hearing. We are not having a public hearing. Therefore, we can open it up to general discussion of the application and take final action on the application if that is the feeling of the board. Is there further discussion of this application? Yes, John. Uh, just another minor question for the applicant. If, uh, if the brick is not used, um, what, what would be the material in the dugout? Basically, the dugout's been made of a masonry block core, and then on both, the way it's proposed uh, for the full extent, on both sides of this masonry block, there would be a brick exterior and then a brick interior. Uh, one of the things we thought the boosters might want to, to do to save some money and to save some brick costs is to delete the interior so you, you would just have that masonry block uh, appearance on the inside of the dugout. Only on the interior, though. That's correct. Thank you. Yes, Nancy. Right ahead. <laughs> Where did the people sit? Are they bunt, uh, benches or... Uh, uh, Keith could probably address this better than I, but I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Um, I know this is a, a banked area. There, as far as I know, there are... Are you talking about inside the dugout? No, no, no. Spectators? The spectators watching the games. Yeah. Uh, it, the baseball field is totally encompassed by a chain link fence. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no spectators are allowed inside that area. Yeah. So the, and they typically stand behind this banked area. And I know some of them bring their lawn chairs down and sit behind the dugout, uh, behind the backstop, rather. Um, for the softball area, it's a fairly, dis uh, fairly unorganized area um, along the sidelines here, which I believe that they just stand and, and watch. Is that correct, Keith? Correct. Um, is there much of 
an audience, fans? Depends upon the game. <laughs> well, give me numbers. Oh, I don't know. Twenty? Hundred. Oh, that many. Further questions of the applicant from board members? <clears throat> Steve. What is the cost of the project? We haven't really uh, put out any numbers on that yet. If I had to guess, um, I would say it's uh, probably in the range of seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars. How much? Seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars, if I had to guess. And that's a very rough guess. I haven't really put any numbers to it. Yes, he did, Nancy. He says seventy-five thousand dollars. <laughs> How are you going to raise that money in a month? The boosters, I understand, have have some ideas of how to do that. Um, they haven't. I don't know if they've approached anybody, but I, I think they've talked about it. And, no, we do have a tentative uh, fundraising plan. But we, we learned our lessons with the early field. We wanted to be careful and not start the fundraising before we get people. It's not that we can't hear, hear you, but if, if we need to ask either you or Mr. Weatherby to speak again, if you could come to the podium just so that we can have it on our tape. Thank you. In following a lot, along with that, then, um, get it for you. is that a retail cost as opposed to a volunteer sort of wholesale cost? That would be... And again, this is a fairly rough guess. I haven't really applied numbers to it, but that would be a contractor. If you have a contractor come in and do it, obviously the, the boosters are going to try to get donated materials, obviously have donated labor to build it. And uh, through that, I mean, that, obviously that cost would go down. Just go ahead, David. Continuing on that, if, if the boosters were not able to get full funding for this project, would you do it in a partial way so you could be ready for opening day next year? I believe, I'll speak for you today, I believe that would be a council decision. I think we'd have to come to the council and ask for additional funding. I don't know if the boosters are in a position to, to ask for that right now. I don't mean to belabor this, but um, is most of the cost in um, in earthwork? Um, obviously, brick isn't cheap. Um, there's no, but it's not horrendously expensive either, though. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the earthwork is well. There would be some prepping for the for the walkways, and obviously the uh, the dugouts themselves. You're going to excavate the the foundation or the, the slab area. Uh, there is some cost to run the drainage underground, so there is some earthwork cost there. Uh, there's some concrete involved, there's materials involved, the, uh, the ramps and the walkways themselves <laughs> have a cost to them. Again, the seventy-five to $100,000 figure is, is a rough figure. I have to admit, it sort of took my breath away when you said it the first time. That's a lot of money to do the scope of the work that's uh, pictured here. Doesn't matter. You know, they're raising the funds. So. Actually, uh, Dave Reed has a comment. Just a moment, Nancy. Dave, if you could identify yourself for our recording secretary, please. Yes, my name is David Reed, and uh, I'm, so, I'm associated with uh, the uh, Boosters Club and um, trying to get this entire project off the ground. Uh, I'll, I'll be as uh, brief as I can be. I would just like to tell you that um, th that figure had not been brought to my attention, you know, until this uh, time. The numbers that I have for the cost of building these four dugouts is going to be in the range from twenty to thirty thousand dollars. Now I'm not talking about the sidewalks or anything else. I'm just talking about 
you know, the uh, materials that, that are needed for the four dugouts. The bricks are going to cost between eight and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Um, there's obviously other costs: the cement slabs and the footings and uh, the blocks themselves, the roofs, the netting that we're going to have as a protection barrier in front of the four dugouts, the benches. Um, Jim Rowe, who I'm quite sure that most of you know, has graciously already uh, agreed to donate all of the block for all four dugouts, which is a major cost. And the figures that you're hearing uh, do not include uh, in-kind donations of materials and labor. We plan on having all of the labor donated. For the, you know, so I think the figure that you hear, you know, is like Steve says, to have an outside contractor come in here and do this whole project from start to finish. Uh, we already have a number of people that are, are just waiting, actually, for me to call them and, and to start in on the project once, once it gets approved. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions of the boosters while Dave is at the podium? Go ahead, Mark. Um. <clears throat> If you, I, I would assume, maybe this is a question also for, for Maureen, but uh, an approval uh, of four dugouts doesn't compel you to build four dugouts. If, if, you, had, if you had to in order to uh, work with budget constraints, you could build two dugouts and, and then come back <coughs> for, for future approval for the other two, could you not? Maureen? Go ahead, Maureen. Uh, the planning board approval could in fact be severed, however, uh, the town manager has explicitly expressed his concern to me that we need to have equivalent facilities for both girls and boys sports. Therefore, uh -huh. you need to have, if you're going to be building only two dugouts, there has to be one at each field. <laughs> one team, the home team gets the dugout. Let it go. No well. If I may just briefly mention uh, how we plan on doing the, some of the fundraising is, you know, we're going to target a few individuals uh, with a direct mail, um, you know, the individuals and some organizations that uh, you know, have strong ties to baseball and softball in this town. And we feel very confident that we're going to be able to raise a significant amount of money in a short period of time. Thank you, Dave. Nancy, you had a question earlier? Well. First of all, do girls play softball and baseball? Are the teams mixed? No, the teams are not mixed. Just girls play the softball and just the boys are playing baseball. Not that you couldn't have a mixture, but we don't in this town, and Keith can probably... You can't have a mixture. You can't have a mixture. Why not? The, uh, the rules we play by... The rules of the, uh, the main principals association uh, do not allow girls and boys to play on teams when they are equivalent teams of both genders. So boys can play baseball, girls can play softball. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> what about the handicap? Uh, are handicapped going to play softball or baseball? Why do you need the paths going down to the dugouts? dugouts? Yeah. Um, primarily, the, the fields themselves aren't ADA accessible. Um, and it, although it's possible, um, I don't think that uh, somebody with a major disability is probably going to be able to play a, a competitive sport. However, you do have coaches, you might have managers that uh, may require the, the ADA accessibility to the field. And because it's primarily a federal law. Since this is a municipal public facility, it's built after 1992, we have to provide that, that uh, accessibility <coughs> to the field. Thank you. <coughs> Further questions or concerns? Thank you, David. No, I was just going to make a motion. Go right ahead. Motion for approval. Findings of fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review to construct dugouts and walkways at Holman and Capano Fields, located north of the high school. 
which require review under Section 19-9, Site Plan Regulations. The applicant would like the option to eliminate the red brick on the interior of the dugouts to reduce cost of the project. The application substantially complies with Section 19-9-6 Site Plan Approval Standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review to construct dugouts and walkways at Holman and Capano Field, located north of the high school, be approved subject to the following condition, that the applicant shall have the option to eliminate the red brick on the interior of the dugouts to reduce cost of the project. Thank you, Second. David. A seconded made by Steve. Further discussion of the motion now on the table? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand, please. Those opposed? There are none. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor, please. It is unanimous. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.